when I found out I was going to be drafted, the Navy had a program called 90 Day Wonder Program. Uh, in 90 days, if you have a bachelor's degree, in 90 days they train you to be the equivalent of an Annapolis graduate. And we were actually better than the Annapolis graduates. In fact, I had one Annapolis graduate I was training ship handling and he felt inferior because he couldn't be rough enough on the enlisted men. I thought, geez, any place that trains you, you've got to be mean to people. It's not really a good place. Anyway, I came down to enlist this 90 Day Wonder program. And it said, I went through the physical and everything, and I was signing up, and it said, I agree not to get married while I'm in training. And uh, it said, well, can I get married afterwards? And I said, oh, sure, if you're in this country, but we won't promise you where you'll be. <clears throat> so I called Jenny and I said, your mother says we can get married next Friday. Is it okay with you? So uh, we got married. And I actually did have, uh, I enlisted the next day, but I had a month or two before I got called up. So then they were recruiting people to be radar officers. Radar was a new thing at that time. And so I volunteered for that got on board the ship when it came out from, it was just a newly constructed destroyer when it came out to Hawaii and uh, got on board. So we go over full speed, shoot for a while and then coming back, most everybody was sleeping because we'd been up all night the night before and I was off to the deck and uh, my lookout said, I think there's a life raft over there. And I got but I'm not sure enough there's a life raft. So I wheeled the ship around and picked up this American pilot. Here he was, deep in Japanese waters, not supposed to be any Americans anywhere near. And we come by and pick him up. He was one happy fellow. <laughs> I don't suppose he had any chance of surviving otherwise. When we got to Okinawa, the Japanese began using kamikaze planes, suicide planes. The pilots would simply fly right into the American ships and sink them. And uh, every ship in my squadron got hit by a kamikaze plane at Okinawa, and mine was the only one that wasn't sunk. I can remember watching the guy come in on my radar, wondering where to stand, which wouldn't have made any difference. But we probably killed him because he hit us and the bomb exploded alongside. So we were uh, not sunk. And we came back to the United States to get repairs. And uh, I went down to Florida to uh, be trained on a new radar. Or I was going to Florida to be trained on a new radar. And I had a week with Jenny before that. And she was in the train with me going to Florida and, and in Rome, Georgia. The newsboys were out saying the war is over. And that was probably the happiest day of my life because we had these plans showing all the kamikaze planes that they had waiting for us. And I figured I survived one, I'd never survive another one. So I felt darn lucky. In fact, uh, the first biography of me that was published in a history of psych book was titled, I Was Just Lucky. I survived and uh, ironically, one of my faculty members here at Michigan when I became department chair was a kamikaze pilot, Sacha Washita. And he'd been the national judo champion of Japan, he was really a very well built, solid guy. So I said to him, so I saw how come you didn't commit suicide? He said, well, I was one of the younger pilots, and it was a matter of honor for the older pilots to go first. And I said, well, I guess the atomic bomb probably saved you from killing me because the Japanese weren't going to surrender until we dropped the atomic bomb.